receiving the gospel with our gospel acclamation listen listen to the gospel message hear the words of eternal life listen to the gospel message alleluia Listen, listen to the gospel message. Hear the words of eternal life. Listen, listen to the gospel message. Alleluia. Listen, listen to the gospel message. Hear the words of eternal life. Listen, listen to the gospel message. Alleluia. Today's Holy Gospel is according to St. John's, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Kabbalah. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, we just heard the Gospel message, which has been repeated for uh, several weeks already. So today, I'm going to focus on the first reading, which is from a book of Joshua. And Joshua at that time was an older man already. He had been spending almost all his life in the wilderness. And now, finally, they enter the promised land. And that is the time he came to the people of Israel and trying to convince them to make a decision. Actually, last couple of weeks or months, I spend a lot of time calling people and chat and talk and had great conversation of a lot of people of our church. In the conversation I had with a faithful elderly lady, she was sad about the fact that her children and grandchildren do not come to church often. Although she told me that everyone could choose their own ways to express their religious 
thoughts, their religious feeling. She did complain about the trend today of many youngsters and their parents turning to sports as the form of religion. And they would do anything to keep themselves involved in sports. They became so committed and loyal to sports that everything else takes a back seat. In fact, according to the current survey, there are less Canadian attending church on Sunday than taking their children to sports right now. Responding to this situation, our first lesson today has much to teach us. Even though we as Lutherans believe that God has taken the initiative to choose us. Anyway, like Joshua and the Israelite tribes, we are called upon to respond to God's calling. God has chosen us and also he is calling us to choose him back. In the setting of today's first reading, Joshua was already very old, as I mentioned. Under his faithful and wise leadership, the Israelite finally, finally, after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, entered the promised land. And they had been successful in their military campaigns against the Canaanite. The Israelites has occupied the promised land, and the land has been allocated to all 12 tribes. It seems like life was going back to normal. However, in his heart, Joshua knew that there were dangers within this so-called normal life. The danger is that whenever life becomes easier and more prosperous and the people start to depend on themselves rather than on God, it could cause the people to become indifferent toward the Lord and their commitment to him. It could delude them into believing that it wasn't God who had been providing for them all along. Rather, they could falsely believe that it was all because of their positive thinking and their hard works. Moreover, the Israelites could put their eggs in multiple baskets by worshiping many gods associated with the people around them, and they might lose their sense of identity as God's chosen people. Joshua is now at the end of his life. He is very old, and he saw the danger with the help of God's spirit. So he called all the Israelites together in one place to renew the covenant between God and his people and reinforce their identity and unity in God. So in a very solemn speech, and Joshua reminded the Israelites that how God had called Abraham away from the worship of many gods in the land of his birth, to worship only one, the only true God who led Abraham to the promised land and multiplied his offsprings after that. Joshua then urged the Israelites to abandon all the false gods from foreign land and serve the Lord their God only. He was not forcing them. He didn't use his authority or even use the military power 
to back him up. Instead, he left all of them an option. He told them to choose on that day whom they will serve. The Lord God or the false gods of their ancestors. Then he made it very clear for his own opinion. He said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. It is actually a call to the covenant renewal. Joshua took this initiative as God's chosen people, as a leader to set an example before his people. Even though the majority of Israelites serve other false god, Joshua was going to serve the Lord God only. He didn't force his people. What he did was to set a good and right example. How about the people of Israel? In response, they did remember at that moment what the Lord God had done to them and literally recited them the salvation history. They remember how God had delivered and protected and provided for them. And then they promise to the Lord by answering, Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Well, we all know the rest of the history and how Israelites walked away from God again. But at least at that moment, all of them are there by following a good and right example made up their decision. So in the faith and life journey, we too can run into dangers and temptations. And there are literally millions of false gods we can choose to follow and worship. We, like Joshua and the Israelites, also need to remember who is our God and what kind of relationship we have with him. We need to remember where we have been, where we are now, and where we're heading to. Jesus made that very, very clear. He said, Now, Joshua made that very clear. And he said, we will serve the Lord. Like how we start our service, our sermon with the example of people worshiping sports more than God. Actually, do you know that all the sports from the very beginning were part of worshiping God? But along the way, and our focus and our attention are drawn away from the final goal of sports, of all these activities, and it draw us away from the God that we are worshiping instead and set us in this process of worshiping him. So today is the Sunday service. And each Sunday, in a sense, is a covenant renewal ceremony. We are giving the opportunity to remember who we are, whose people we are, and where we are. Therefore, Joshua's confession of faith is really the one that we all should and can join together in. Let's hear it again. 
As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen.